Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, after the feast of St. Beatrice da Silva, which we celebrated yesterday, today we celebrate the feast of another nobleman who sanctified himself within the Franciscan order, St. Louis of Anjou. Our today's saint was son of Charles II, King of Naples, and Mary of Hungary, nephew of St. Louis IX, King of France. Already early in his life, he did all he could to help the needy, restoring to all the expedients, such as that of stealing food from the kitchen of the palace for the hungry poor. According to the political custom of these times, together with some of his brothers, he was handed over to the Aragonese as a hostage in order to free his father, who had been made prisoner by the enemy. In this environment, his life was lived more intensely in prayer, with premonitory episodes, such as a fight with a big cat, a demon, that had attacked him while he was in prayer, and that Louis put to fight, to flight with the sign of a cross. At a certain point, he fell so seriously ill as to seem near to death. Cured by the two exiled brothers and by the dismayed gentlemen of the entourage, with the newest discoveries of doctors, he tried to overcome the terrible disease, pulmonary tuberculosis. Ludovico entrusted himself to the faith in God and his will it miraculously was healed instantly, leaving the doctors themselves amazed. And he confided to the two Franciscans present the promise made on the verge of his end to wear the Franciscan habit. After the death of his elder brother, he became the heir of the royal throne of Naples, but renounced to the throne in favor of his brother. With the permission of the Pope, he was secretly invested with the Franciscan habit because they knew that his father wouldn't have accepted that his son would have been a member of an order of friars who went around begging alms, what he deemed not fitting for a prince. Pope Boniface VIII desired to appoint him Bishop of Toulouse in France. He tried to refuse the charge, but after the Pope's insistence, he accepted it under the condition of being able to become a Franciscan first. And so, on the 24th of December, 1296, he pronounced his vows in the convent of Araceli in Rome, where he had spent already some period of preparation for the event, living in common with the friars but wearing still the habit under the ecclesiastical garment on the advice of the Pope, so as not to disturb the susceptibility of the king, his father. On December the 30th, 1296, again in the Basilica of St. Peter, he was consecrated a bishop by the Pope. Always at Araceli, he solemnly put down his ecclesiastical clothes and wearing the Franciscan habit, arousing his father's discontent. He carried out his episcopal ministry without sparing himself, always present where there was to help, without excluding those who were probably ill with obscure evil contagions. His heart was full of love for the fr Franciscan poverty, contempt for all worldly pomp and vanity, the refusal of all comforts, the desire to follow in the footsteps the poor Christ. After a while, Louis headed towards Rome with the intention to manifest to the Pope his intention to renounce to his episcopal office 
which he considered to be in contrast with his religious vocation. On the journey he fell ill, and on August 19th, 1297, he died peacefully at the age of 23 in his hometown amidst general consternation for his wish he was buried in the convent of the Friars Minor of Marseille, whose tomb immediately became a pilgrimage destination for many faithful. Today also we make the commemoration of another great saint, who is Saint John Eudt, whose feast is very fittingly placed on this present day, on which we start our Triduum of Prayers in preparation of the Feast of the Immaculate Heart of Mary, which we will be celebrating this Saturday. This saint, who lived in the 16th, 17th century, in fact, was a great promoter of the devotion and the cult of the Sacred Heart of Jesus and the purest heart of his Most Holy Mother, and composed the first liturgical texts for the celebration of the feasts of these sacred hearts. He assisted the plague victims in the region where he lived. Later, he consecrated himself to parish missions because he realized that much more than just physically starving, the people were starving for God and the right Catholic doctrine. He proved to be a preacher of extraordinary qualities. Where he passed, he converted, someone said. Realizing, therefore, how important the figure of the priest is, who must conduct, instruct, and sanctify the people, he built a seminary, giving life to the congregation of Jesus and Mary, later on called the Eudists. He was aware that the worst, the worst thing harming the people did not come from outside the church. It was inside the Church of France. It lied in its poor and apathetic clergy, in the ignorance of too many priests. John Hughes is convinced that the first and most urgent need is to remake the clergy. Thus, he founded two religious congregations, one for men and one for women, whose aim was to help former prostitutes to change their lives, both of them dedicated to the sacred hearts of Jesus and Mary. He contemplated the sacred hearts of Jesus and Mary as a unity, saying, you must never separate what God has so perfectly united. So closely are Jesus and Mary bound up with each other that whoever beholds Jesus sees Mary Whoever loves Jesus, loves Mary. Whoever has devotion to Jesus, has devotion to Mary. He, together with, with the other Marian saints, whose feast we celebrate this week, is a good companion in our preparation for this great Marian feast day. Today also occurs to be the anniversary of the fourth apparition of Our Lady at Fatima. In August, unlike the other month, the apparition did not take place on the 13th of the month, but on the 19th, because the mayor of the place, who was a Freemason, had kidnapped the little shepherds, threatening to throw them into a pot with boiling oil if they would not have denied that Our Lady had appeared to them. During the apparition on this day, the Queen of the Rosary said, I want you to continue praying the rosary every day. Pray, pray a great deal, and make sacrifices for sinners. For many souls go to hell because they have no one to pray and make sacrifices for them. We also want to, to make the proposal to be faithful to the daily recitation of the Holy Rosary and offering up all the sufferings which the Lord sends to us, and if we are able to do so, also to offer up some spontaneous sacrifices, saying the prayer which Our Lady herself told at Fatima, that is, 
O my Jesus, it is, it is for love of Thee, for the conversion of sinners, and in reparation for the sins committed against the Immaculate Heart of Mary, I offer this sacrifice to Thee. May the holy names of Jesus, Mary, and Joseph be blessed now and forever. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Thank you for listening. Please remember to click subscribe and to hit the bell for notifications. And in this age of censorship, please consider helping support us at sensefidelium.com. Under the Donate and Support tab, there are plenty of ways to help support the work and to help grow and sustain the efforts of Census Fidelium in general. May God reward you, and thank you very much.